Welcome to the second episode of Pardon My French right here in my basement, my makeshift studio, in my workout room. Thank you so much everyone who tuned in yesterday. We do apologize for some of the technical difficulties we experienced as we're learning as we grow. Uh, this has been quite a new beginning for me to try to recreate my classroom into your living room. But I've learned a lot from it, and I'm having a joy of a time doing it uh, for you. And I appreciate your support in that process. So welcome to the watch party. It's Friday. And just for, so you know, I am actually filming these live every morning. So these are not pre-recorded. I'm actually filming this, then I upload it for the watch party so that I can be in real time when uh, I get to talk to you. So I want to start off by... Um, giving out our winner, and oh my gosh, I laid it down, and where did I lay it? I laid my, uh, the box right there with the scissors in it, sorry about that. Um, I, wanna, I wanna say thank you for all of you that had the contest, uh, that entered the contest yesterday with um, using the hashtag French Cut with Candy, making sure that you tag Sunlight's Balayage that you take a selfie of yourself and me together and you get creative and you make sure to post that right onto your feed. Some of you went through and posted it on your stories and so it was a little more difficult. So you gotta post that on your feed. But I do wanna say congratulations for these scissors are gonna go today to our lucky winner, Mr. Chris Hitchcock from Madison, Wisconsin. Yay! Yay! So excited, Chris. Chris, I thought you had a beautiful smile. I love the fact that you were sitting on the floor with your computer on your bed. I mean, if that's not a new classroom of, the, of, the tw of 2020, I don't know what is. But I really appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to DM me your address. And at the end of this episode today, make sure to take those pictures again so that you too can win a wonderful pair of French shears. Also yesterday, I want to answer one question before the class gets started here. I've got a lot to cover today. Uh, one of the questions that I got uh, was from Jamie Ratcliffe. And Jamie said to me, I am 4'11". How is it that I stand my client up when I cut the basic outline? And so, Jamie, I wanted to answer your question for everyone. So I'm going to lay this down for just a second. And I want to make sure that I get this question answered correctly so that y'all know exactly what this means. So in the French cutting world, as I said yesterday, the shape of the head and the body and the silhouette is super important. Being able to know where the shoulder line is, where the neckline is, and how I'm going to actually put uh, my line in. But it's really easy to stand a guest up and actually cut a basic outline. Now, Jamie, I do have to tell you a story about one of my students from Portland, Oregon. Her name was Mary Madden from Magnum Opus Salon out there. I've taught for many years. She was a little bit shorter than you, actually. And she actually had a, a step stool next to her station. And she would just step right up and stand nice so that she could cut her basic outline because she believed so much in that. So if your elbows are higher than your shoulders, your guest is too tall. So what you can do is, of course, get a way to stand up if that's something you want to do. You're not going to always stand up your men. You're not going to always stand up somebody who you're just trimming an outline maybe on a shorter haircut. But anything like a bob or below the shoulder or in the back, you definitely want to try to stand it up. And one of the reasons why, Jamie, is because when we do stand our guests up and we're actually cutting our basic outlines, we have a much straighter trajectory of our scissors. Of course, this convex scissor is a wonderful way for me to be able to quickly cut into that basic outline and to also be able to um, be chest to chest, as I call it. So when I'm cutting, I am chest to chest this way or on chest to chest this way and when I cut the side of any kind of hair what I do is I turn my guest or in this case my Colette mannequin by the way for those of you who might want one $23 on the, on the Sunlight's website right now they're going fast 
I'm just trying to pack your living rooms with some friends because I know we can't have with social distancing right now. So I'm selling these bad boys out there for you just to help you in this time of need so that you can get out and take class. But nonetheless, in this case, I would be turning that head. So imagine if this was her body and she was actually facing me this way, I would be turning her head away from what I was cutting. I would be pulling that down and I would be cutting. Now, one thing to keep in mind too, is anytime I'm cutting more than an inch of hair, I always cut on top of my finger. And the reason for that is if I were to be cutting this outline and I was cutting more than an inch, what I don't wanna do, and I hope that I can get this for the camera, I don't wanna roll my finger. And that's something that a lot of us do when we cut our basic outlines. We tend to wanna roll with what we do and our body kinda of rolls in with it. And when we do that, what that does is it cuts the top layer shorter than the bottom layer. So it's important for me to be able to sit down in what I'm cutting and making sure that my finger is nice and straight like that. So the, so the actual plane of my hand is going to be more straight versus rolled. And if you're finding challenges with your haircuts, as I often talk about in my classroom, is question mark haircuts, where things go in and then they go out, so then you have to cut another inch off the bottom to make it stronger. A lot of that comes from your body position. So if your body position is rolling and your finger position is rolling and you're cutting into the palm of your hand like that, then what you tend, tend to do is you cut that top layer shorter. Now yesterday I also talked about the serration of the edge of my shear, which allows that 45 degree bevel. And that's actually very important because that bevel is on the outside of that shear, right where I'm going to be taking that hair straight off. You'll get much, much cleaner lines in that process. But of course, by all means, if you feel like your elbows are up higher than your shoulders, you can have your guest have a seat. Now, if you let your guests down and they do have a seat, I do want you to keep in mind a couple of aspects. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. I want you to keep in mind that when you're working, you still want to try to have your guests at belly level. I always say right into my belly button is the sweet spot for my arms and my airplane wings to fly. And so that gives me that opportunity for me to be able to work at the right pace and the right level throughout my haircut. Because what I don't want to do is have her down so low that it causes my body to over direct or my body and my body position not to be straight and to be square. So I hope I answered your question, Jamie. Um, and I want to talk to you a bit about what I'm going to teach today um, and hope to, to keep those questions coming, of course. Um, and, and all of that kind of uh, thing. I hope to be able to have these little watch parties nice and short and sweet and give you some clip notes of, of French cutting. Today I'm going to talk about the three angles of French cutting. There's a fourth, but I'm going to save that for Monday, so make sure that you tune in then. I'm going to talk about the difference in how we hold our hand, how we hold our, how we hold our comb, uh, what our body position is, what our hand position, of course, and our comb position, scissor position. Those three angles I want to talk to you about today that's going to help you a lot. But first, for all my listeners out there, I thought that maybe what I could do is give a fun fact of some of the things that I'm going to be doing when I get ready to go back to work. And I think that as we're in this pandemic, we're sharing many ideas about all the varying things that are going on as we ramp back up in our salon and whether you're, you are an independent contractor or a, a team of many, we're all trying to find the right answers. One thing that I would consider is uh, taking out all of the magazines in your salon. If you haven't thought about it, I wouldn't have a book, I wouldn't have a magazine or anything for anybody to touch. I would also uh, make sure that your business is a by appointment only so that you have absolutely no walk-in business. I know that can be hard for folks, but we really want to discourage walk-in business so that we can pre-screen everyone that comes into our salon. Another thing that I'm thinking a lot about is 
prepayment and pre-collection prior to the visit. And in my case, based on my computer system, it would be getting their credit card information ahead of time and then charging them after the service. But minimizing the amount of uh, touching of cash or any of those types of things, I think is gonna be really important as we ramp back up. And last but not least, I'm gonna have a no guest, no visitors in my salon. You know, a lot of times people bring their significant others, their children, their other, uh, their moms, their dads, or anyone in between. Uh, I'm gonna be by appointment only for only the person with that appointment. So those are just some tips for you uh, that I wanted to share with my hair community out there of how to ramp back up uh, once we get started. So, speaking of getting started, I'm going to reset my, um, uh, my set here, and I will be back just in a moment, so stay tuned. So I'm back, the introduction to the angles on part of my front. So let's jump right in. So obviously with British hair cutting, we have learned that there are three angles. There's zero degrees, 90 degrees, and 45 degrees. And what's really important to understand and why it's so important to have your body position correctly is that in French cutting, you are always in the middle. So whatever it is that you cut, you are standing directly in the middle of that angle. So for us, let me go through these, um, these descriptions so that they can uh, better identify with you. We have an angle that's called mesh a mesh. And mesh a mesh, means straight, section by section. It removes the most amount of hair. And so when I'm cutting a mesh or mesh angle, when I have my scissors, I am always going to be straight, meaning my hand is straight, my scissor is straight, my elbows are straight, my feet are straight. So hand, body, position is always straight. My hand always faces the scalp. In interior, that is a very different angle for someone who's been cutting palm to palm, and that is where the length is at the top and we cut from short to long. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you just in a moment. But one thing that you could write down in your notes, and I hope you're taking some notes with me today, is that when you cut interior, you're cutting into and inside the head. So everything that falls is gonna fall into the head, similar to the bob that you might have seen yesterday when I was uh, showing uh, the combing extra, uh, uh, how to hold scissors yesterday. Exterior, exterior is where the length is on the bottom and we cut from long to short. Um, that angle exits the head. That angle pushes to the outside of the head. My arms are always going to be airplane wings. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a moment. My feet also move with that angle as I'm cutting. Again, I'm going to demonstrate that. And then my hand always, always faces the scalp. Okay, so let's get started. So the very first thing I showed you yesterday is holding my scissors all the way down to the base of my finger. Placing my comb like so. So I know some of you had your mannequin heads out yesterday. This is how I hold my comb. It's in a V when I am done. And I'm actually going to use my comb and my finger. And it's all going to be one motion. So if I'm going to cut mesh, my feet are square as I said. My arms are square as I said. My scissor is square. And I'm going to be on the head like this. So if I'm up on the top of the head, this is how I'll be. If I'm on the side of the head, this is how I'll be. If I'm in the back of the head, this is how I'll be, square and flat. You have to be very careful with mesh and mesh, even though it removes the most amount of hair and removes the most amount of bulk, to not want to dip and dive in with that angle. And speaking of dipping and diving, that brings me right to cutting an interior angle. And I thought that this one I would spend a little more time on with you today because I wanna show you the difference in how you have learned to cut hair. So say you're stacking up a bob and you're in the back of the head and you're taking your section, whether it's a pie section, whether it's a, uh, a straight uh, vertical section, whatever it is, you have always been taught to comb with your comb this way, to hold the hair in your hand, like so, 
and to pivot the graduation of your finger based on the depth of the bob line in which you're trying to do. So if I am holding this hair straight out like this, that is how I would be cutting with my scissor palm to palm, right? Now in French, it's completely different. And this is what is the hardest thing for my student to carry or to, to, to get when I'm in the classroom is really making sure that you understand that if you had learned to cut into the head, you sit your body in and you've learned to cut this way. But when we are doing French, the U part is so important that we are one step behind that section and then our arms actually come out and our airplane wings go up and down like so. So my hand position, goes straight into the back of the head, like this. My elbow comes up because my length is at the top, my shortness is at the bottom, and whatever it is that I'm trying to cut, now there is my graduation. Now you'll notice that my feet were straight in mesh and mesh. So when I go to interior, and I apologize, it's very hard to see my feet because I, I can't unless I jump up, I guess. Um, I have on cute shoes though. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, I have to bend my knee. I have to open my stride slightly. And then I have to take my hand, bring that lock to the back of my comb. And that's how I would be cutting that hair. So you notice that my elbow is up. My other elbow is tucked into my body. And I'm actually going to cut that angle like this. Again, I'm gonna show you tons of finished haircuts on Monday. Today, I just wanna go through the introduction of angles. It's not gonna do me any good to be in here and doing tons of haircuts until you really understand what it is that I'm doing. So again, mesh is straight, interior opens, in and up. So my length is at the top and I'm cutting from short to long, which is different than you cutting from long to short. The next angle that we have is an exterior angle. So exterior, as I said before, is outside the head or exiting the head. And how I try to make you think about that is when you're looking at a picture or a photograph, you're getting ready to do a consultation. If somebody brings you a picture of the photograph and you see the hair moving away or flipping out or making um, uh, lots of air or, or things like that in the hair, then you always want to realize or remember the first law that you probably learned in beauty school, and that is short pushes long, right? So as I'm cutting an exterior angle, my airplane wing is gonna change. This elbow is going to go up because that's the length at the bottom, and I'm gonna cut from the outside to the inside. So it's going to be out and in, long to short which is quite different than what we have when we are doing um, our interior angle. So as I'm combing that hair, I am going to rock my comb. I'm gonna lay it in. I'm going to lock to the back of my finger and that is going to be my exterior angle. And you can see how my elbow is up, my finger is down and I'm pointing the tips of my fingers to the ceiling, pardon me, my knuckle is down and the tips of my fingers are pointing to the ceiling. That way, when that hair begins to fall, I have shorter layers to longer layers. Now that might seem very simple, but what we're going to go over as we continue to get deeper into the Pardon My French series is where to put what when. Now, many of you know me as a balayage artist. One thing I wanna bring up right now is that I always cut hair before I color hair. I'm very, very passionate about that because for me, where I'm laying my layer in is what I call the air to my hair or the ridge in my hair. And so when you're in my classroom and I'm teaching you how to paint your haircut or paint energy into your haircut, the reason is because why in the world would I wanna have all this hard work of a balayage on this hair and then go cut it off. That's one reason. But the real reason is, is how the layers follow the shape of the head. 
So wherever a layer might end based on my haircut is where the traveling of my balayage might connect all the way through and down. So those are very, very important points of why you should rethink how you're doing things in the salon. So what does that mean as we ramp back up into this pandemic? That means you're gonna be pre-cutting a lot of things dry. What that also means for you, uh, possibly if, if you wanna cut something wet, no worries, of course I cut plenty of wet hair all day, is that maybe your guest may come in with their hair already shampooed and wet and ready for you to pre-cut it prior to you actually painting or doing your color. It takes no time to do it. It's very, very quick in that process. I've heard a lot of talk out there, and I know in my own town, we're all talking about whether or not we're gonna bring the blow dry back for the first four weeks of business. I mean, we have to think about the things uh, that we're doing, whether or not blow drying hair is taking up time and efficiency and potentially blowing things around. And when we're trying to keep things very safe and sanitized, that might be something that we have to consider. So as a French artist, it's super important for me to pre-cut everything ahead of time. And then of course, do my color or my balayage. Of course, I paint sometimes on top of the color as well. So those are varying ways to do just that. So just to go through it one more time, I wanna say, and comb, add, pinch, prepare, comb, and that is a straight mesh angle cut. And I usually only cut twice because I'm sawing the hair. So when I pick this hair up, it is a saw, saw. It's not a pick this hair up and a snap, 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 snap. It's not a pick this hair up and a Da, 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 da. because the reality is just like I said in my first episode of pardon my French I'm like a tailor it's very important for me to first lay out the outline to get the strength in my layering and then go back and put in my accessory one thing also uh, with French cutting is everything is cut perpendicular to the scalp so everything comes straight up or straight out and then all that I do is I just literally place in my angle, exterior, interior, or mesh, based on the sectioning that I will follow and discuss with you uh, next week. So that was mesh. So exterior would be, again, my foot would open, my elbow wing would go up, my I would pinch that hair, I would place it into my comb, I would come from the outside in, so I would be cutting from long to short, and I would do two saws, one, two. Another reason why a great seven inch shear allows you to work faster. And as that hair falls, you can see where that layer lives based on um, how I decided to layer the hair. And then the last and final piece would be for me to um, comb and or cut something interior. So I can cut interior not only on the sides and back of the hair, I can also cut it on the top. So I'm gonna show you both. The first would be interior on a side. Now granted, I don't have a guide. I haven't really done a haircut. This is not a haircut. This is just Candy showing you the introduction of the angle. But basically what I would do is my hand would come out like this. I would lock into the back of the comb. My knee would bend. I would find my guide at the bottom that I just created, which I have not created, but I did. I'm just faking it for you right now. And I would lock my hand and I would saw, and that would be my angle. Now, if I was going to do interior on the side, maybe I might want to do a high interior on the top. So a high interior, all that means is just high up on the head, on the top of the head. And so for me, I would just pull this hair in and I would still push, cutting from short to long. Now, something that I wanna teach you that will really be very helpful in understanding is that a lot of times when you have hair that has a deep side part, you may end up cutting an exterior on the longer side and a high interior on the shorter side. And here's why. So if you think about it for a minute, if I was cutting long to short here, 
When that hair falls, here's where my layers live, right? They live all in this area, which are gonna fall somewhere down in here. And sometimes when you have that challenge or that guest that comes in and says, I don't know why this side does so good and this side does not, but they have a deep part, then you will be able to do a high interior on the smaller side of the head, and here's why. And this is kind of a mind blow uh, moment for anybody who's out there cutting hair right now because you, you always wonder how to make that balance. But for me, if I cut a high interior here and I cut from short to long, one, two, with my saw, when that hair falls, it falls exterior, doesn't it? And look where it falls. Look where those layers fall. They actually fall in the exact same place as they did with exterior on this side. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna be getting a lot of hearts on that. I know I am, because that is like a mind blow moment. Drop the mic, oh my gosh, I finally have realized what I've been doing wrong on my haircuts. Why? Because you have more hair that travels from this side over. And if you do the exact same thing on this side, what's to say that it's going to balance? But if I cut an exterior and it falls exterior, and I cut a high interior and it falls exterior, then now I have a balanced haircut. So these are things that I think can really help you along the way. French cutting is super, super, super fun. It's very fast, it's very efficient. I'm really excited about what next week has to hold for us. I'm going to be introducing my most favorite angle, which is a reverse exterior on Monday. I'm gonna be showing you four different haircuts that are all pre-finished. Then we're gonna finish off the week with some wonderful video that I uh, pre-done some haircuts prior to uh, this pandemic. And I um, am really excited to share some of my texturizing techniques and things such as that. So if you've joined in today, do not forget to take that selfie of yourself watching these videos so that you too can win a great pair of French shears by using the hashtag French Cut with Candy by tagging us on Sunlight's Balayage and putting it and posting it on your live feed. I hope you've enjoyed the introduction of the angles today. I know it's a lot of information to take in. Go back, maybe practice a bit at home and make sure uh, that you tune in again at 12 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time on Monday. And if you tune in early, don't pre-watch. Wait for me to come on so that I can talk to you. Happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. I have so enjoyed being able to share these gifts with you. Nothing makes me prouder than to think of my hair community out there who's in the classroom and really trying to improve on their skills. It gives me great, great, great pride to know what hard workers you are and how committed to education you've always been. Virtual hug. See you on Monday.